everyone welcome to loving guidance mama marina here and today's loving guidance is in the category of the mystical unknown and in particular um, when our loved ones come back um, and send us signs from the other realm so when our loved ones have passed on and they've gone on to the next realm they come back and they like to try to communicate with us in the best way that they can to let us know that they're okay over there and that they're still guard guarding us protecting us loving us from that other side <clears throat> and often um we have to be open to their communications in order to be able to receive them so Lots of people are skeptical about the afterlife. Um, many people believe that once you die, you die and that's it. There is no afterlife. And there are others who do believe in an afterlife of some sort, whether you believe in going to heaven, um, wherever. And you, everybody has their own um, beliefs about that. Um, sometimes it's based on their spirituality, their religion and so forth. But um, in this particular loving guidance, we're going to talk about the signs and symbols that even the skeptics might find bewildering. So some people who don't believe that there is an afterlife, after a loved one passes on, things start happening that seem beyond coincidence, that seem beyond just chance that something like that would happen. And it makes them start to wonder if there isn't um, something more to, to the, the next level after we pass away to the afterlife, right? So I like to think of our life as a bubble. And so um, if you think about the air all around us, we we breathe it in we breathe it out and we exhale and um when we're creating a bubble we take the soapy the soapy solution and we inhale the air that's around us into our lungs and then we exhale with a certain level of force that air that same air out of us and blow it into the soapy solution to create the bubble so we blow and the bubble is formed and now that air is encapsulated in the bubble and the bubble floats around and so forth. Um, and so eventually the bubble will burst and the soapy solution will break away, allowing the air that was within it to return to that from which it came. It returns back to what it where it came from the air all around and so i like to think of our living energy our life energy as that same cons in that same way where we have a life energy and it is temporarily encapsulated um, not in a soapy solution but in a human body and that human body it goes along with the with the energy inside of it until the body breaks away, it dies, at which point the life energy that is within that body returns to that from which it came. And the body itself returns to that from which it came, which is the earth. It goes back to the earth. The body is of the earth and it goes back to the earth. And so if we go with that premise that we have a life energy and that energy goes comes out of, you know, is now released, if you will, from the encapsulation of the human form. Um, that energy is now all around and it is free. It's liberated. It, it can do anything. It can tap into your radio. It can tap into the phone lines. It can move things. It is energy. And so a lot of the, the ways that are um, loved ones try to communicate with us is through the means that they now have. They don't have a body anymore to be able to tap us on the shoulder to get our attention or to use a voice box to actually speak to us. They don't have those means to communicate. So now they have to communicate in the ways in which they can. 
and so through energy right so the the most common way that our loved ones try to get our attention and come and communicate with us is through the dream the dream world where we are in a, a we're sleeping we're in a receptive state um, energetically our soul is in a receptive state and they can appear to us in our dreams whether we hear their voice in the dream whether we see them in the dream so that is one energetic means that they can if you want to think of it as a portal that they can come through and and communicate with us um, that is one of the means that they use um, and visitation dreams are very vivid they're different from just your average daily dream they're very they feel real you feel like you were really with them that you could touch them that they you know that there was substance to the content of those dreams and it's really important to pay attention to those dreams because a lot of times the messages within them are true communications that they're trying to to get to us um, for us to understand and and maybe even um, adjust in life once we wake up we can actually take those messages and apply them to our life so there have been people for example who had dreams of um, certain lottery winning numbers and they went and applied it and when they woke up they went and they played the lottery and they won those numbers actually helped them win um, the lottery the numbers that they dreamt about so there are communications there are these are very important messages in the dream world another way that our loved ones attempt to reach out to us is through scent so they can only do they can only communicate with how we can receive the communications right so um taste our senses that's how we receive from the world a sight our ears through hearing sound nose through scent and and of course touch and so um they sometimes you might be let's say in the kitchen and your whatever aunt emma your deceased loved one she used to have a particular favorite perfume or she had um some some natural scent of, about her body that is very distinctive to her and you're in the kitchen and suddenly the whole kitchen just envelops in her scent and it catches you off guard you you look around and you're like that's aunt emma's perfume or whoever your grandma or their scent envelops all around you and it can't you can't help but trigger the memory you can't help but think of them at which point you are like is, is, you wonder if they're around you because their scent is so strong and you it's not your imagination you are actually smelling this this odor and as quickly as it it comes about is it also as quickly as it fades away and so they need to our deceased loved ones need to actually kind of hook our attention we're so caught up in the day-to-day -day of everything that we do on a day-to-day -day basis that our attention is constantly I mean we're really bombarded with a lot of distractions so the ways in which they hook our attention to remember them um, for them to pay attention to them is it has to be a little bit catching off guard something that is sudden something that really is bewildering and will um, cause us to pause for a moment and not be paying attention to our usual and and in fact pay attention to to the message that they're trying to bring in so scent is one of the ways where all of a sudden you're washing the dishes and all of a sudden the scent is there and you're caught off guard um and then of course there is um our eyes so there have been people who have seen apparitions you know i've seen a ghost and and they it is very true people have witnessed apparitions they are able to take on a type of it's not really a form like they're 
they'll say it's a ghost they're see-through so it's an energy it's the way that the energy um, configures itself so that it can actually reflect light and our eyes can actually detect that energy and so apparitions are very real some people have seen what we call ghosts um, and figures and shadows and and gray blobs of, of light and they will they will use whatever means they can um, for us to notice them visually using our sight um, and then they also come to us and with our sight is the TV. So sometimes they can tap into the energy within our TV and give us a message through what we're watching. So maybe even your computer screen, they can tap in. So if you're pondering, I don't know, a, a choice that you need to make and you're having a hard time making that decision and something pops up with regard to that on your computer screen or on your TV, uh, a lot of times it is actually um, your deceased loved ones communicating with you, trying to help you make that appropriate decision and trying to help give you some guidance with regard to the best choice in making that decision. They're giving their, their sort of feedback or encouragement. And some people would say, well, I don't know. I think it's, you know, the, the, um, algorithms in, in social media and so forth that are causing me to to think of these things and controlling but a lot of times it's actually our deceased loved ones especially if it's something that we haven't talked about we're just pondering it within ourselves within our soul our own living energy and our deceased uh, loved ones can pick that up they can actually feel what we're sensing energetically in terms of our emotions in terms of our thoughts it's all energy and so they try to help us in their own way so what we see on TV or what we see on our computer screen may just be uh, communication from the other side and then um, sound so similar to coming through the TV they they try to communicate via sounds and so if you are listening you're driving along you're listening to the radio or whatever and all of a sudden uh, their favorite song comes on and it catches you off guard you're like wow that's dad's favorite song or that's mom's favorite song she used to love that song it is them catching again hooking your attention saying hey i'm here remember me and so they're trying to uh, get you to remember them and, and just giving you that sense that they're still around, they still love you and, and keeping a, a, a bond, a type of connection, a thread of connection with you. Um, so sound, definitely what you hear on the radio is another way. Um, if you have a phone that all of a sudden it rings and you answer it and there's static or there's silence on the other end. You may just brush it off as, as a prank call, but in reality, it is your deceased loved one who's able to tap into the phone line to, to, to say hello kind of in their way, the best way they can. They don't have a voice box anymore, but they just want to hear your voice. And so, um, they can do it that way and if a lot of times if you try to call the number back that just called you the prank call um, it will be you can't you can't make the call it won't accept it'll say it's a, a it's a non-working number please try your call again and those are some of the ways that you know that it's them that's a clear indication that it's actually them wanting to hear your voice and say hello type of thing um, and so let's see then they are uh, again they are energy so they're able to leave um, objects in your way so feathers and of course they don't have a body to carry big heavy things they can't leave you know a, a brand new car there for you but they can leave feathers and um, small stones pebbles something that will 
again, hook your attention and remind you of them. And, and so sometimes even they will move objects to, they like to, to play around with you. So they can uh, open and close cabinets um, and cause like a reverberation within cabinets as they, as they open and close the cabinets. They can move objects. So if you were like, gosh, I can't find my car keys. Where are they? Where? And suddenly they're there and you know for a fact they weren't, they probably weren't. They are helping you by placing them where they, where you can now see them. So our deceased loved ones really do want to help us in life. They haven't left our side. Um, and so, yeah, there's all sorts of different means that they, but again, it's all through the senses in which we can experience them. So we might feel like a, a brushing in our hair, uh, a light, gentle patting in our hair while we're falling asleep. And we're like, Did, you know, we'll even touch ourselves like, what the, what was that? And, and it's really them. They actually can, can somehow move our hair and, and give us like a, a gentle breeze. Uh, anytime you're in a room and the temperature within the room suddenly drops, and we, it's easy to try to rationalize it and just say, oh, you know, the heater's broken all of a sudden. The heater's just fine. Um, that breeze that has come through or swept through even though no doors are open no windows are open can definitely be them communicating with you that they are there with you um, it can turn very cold uh, often it's cold not versus not hot where you're in a cold room and suddenly it heats up um, usually they don't go for the heat but they could I'm their energy so they absolutely could but usually it's the sense of cold where you're someplace and all of a sudden similar to the scent that it just envelops you you're suddenly enveloped in this cold air and this chilling air and that is them that is their presence that is the energy that they are um, using to hook your attention and let you know that they are around you and so, um, and sometimes it's even, we think of our main senses, but there's actually like the sixth sense where you can feel a presence. You can actually feel like you, you feel like there are eyes watching you, even though you're alone, nobody's around you. You just feel this heavy presence somewhere lurking and you can sense that and energy can sense energy. Similar to how when you're at the grocery store and you can sense the person next to you is in a rush or is very upset, you can feel those energies. Um, and so that's on a on a soul to soul energetic. It's a vibration. It's a again, it's an energy. And so similar to that, how we can sense other people's in life and living, you know, situations, their energies. The same holds true when we're alone and and one of our loved ones come around to to let us know that they're there we will be able to pick up their presence even though we can't um, see them and so we can feel we can feel them so that is another way there's so many there really are um let's see um lights so their energy they can tap into the lights and the the flickering of the lights so if you're talking let's say you're on the phone and you're reminiscing about you know how your your grandfather's sense of humor and you miss your grandmother's cooking and whatnot and you're just chit-chatting and all of a sudden the lights start to flicker it's them saying thank you i'm here i can hear what you're saying so they are they're trying to communicate and in those instances you can you can say, man, I miss you, grandma, or I miss you, grandpa, whatever. But it's your opportunity to, to banter back, to communicate back with them. Um, let's see. I'm, I wrote these down. So, oh, one of the 
clear ways is they love to come back as creatures, small creatures. So things that have a very temporary or short lifespan, such as insects, ladybugs, butterflies, dragonflies, um, such as birds, uh, cardinals, um, little morning doves. They'll come back as little creatures, mice even, um, squirrels, things that have a shorter lifespan. And, and you'll know it's them because the behavior of the animal is so unusual. Whereas most of the animals scurry off or fly away, these are coming closer and closer to you and acting very bold and brave and they're not running away. They're just lingering around you. Um, and, and so it even catches, again, it catches your attention because you're like, wow, that bird is not afraid of me at all. Like what's wrong with that bird? And so it is them. They are in, they've in, embodied the, um, that bird. They, they've gotten their life energy inside of that bird and that bird is now able to come alive. Sort of like the movie Ghost. If you remember um, Patrick Swayze's spirit was in Whoopi Goldberg and she was animated with his life spirit within similar concept it's their life energy within that little ladybug within that dragonfly within that cardinal and so um they're there and they're trying to catch your attention to let you know it's them because they keep they're not afraid they're not flying off they're not scurrying away from you they are are being pretty bold and keeping an eye on you so it's their way of checking on you so that's one and let's see we've talked about um we've talked about most of them synchronicity is another one so sometimes we brush off synchronicity as just mere coincidence but let's say your um aunt mary passed away and you're thinking about her and suddenly you're driving past a semi truck that says Mary's moving, you know, company. And you look and you're like, wow, that's weird. You know, I was just thinking of my aunt Mary and here it is Mary's moving company. Well, those are the things that are not just chance. They're not random. They seem like they might be. And often our human brain wants to just rationalize it into something like that. But the reality is that those are, it's almost, I want to think of it as like set up to be that way um, so that they can communicate with you um, in, in certain things. Like you're driving past and the sign just happens to be, you know, Gino's. Uh, whatever shoe shoe shop and you're like oh my gosh I miss my uncle Gino he was so great whatever right so those synchronicities are another way that they catch our attention they hook our attention to remember them and to keep them themselves a little bit alive in your own life um, and so yeah that's one and we talked about messages visions and I have them written down here. So I'm trying to remember all of these um, orbs. So that's another one. So sometimes we'll take pictures and we'll see orbs um, in the picture after, after it's taken. And like I said, they're energy. So they can come as these gray, um, I guess, gray hazy lights and and that's one of the forms that they can take on versus you know an actual apparition of themselves or a shadow of of a of a figure um they it's easier for them to be these orbs these light um light embodied um i don't even know the the terminology for them outside of orbs but these light um fixtures if you will that that get captured in the the photographs so that happens a lot you'll see stuff like that um and then numbers so numbers that's the universal language um is numbers and they tap in to communicate with us via numbers so a lot of times we'll look at our phone and it's their birthday so maybe um 
maybe somebody you know was born in July of 1942 and they passed away and you keep seeing 742 on the on the clock or um and things like that where you're driving past and you're driving past the house that the address is 742 those are not chance those numbers the their communications so be open-minded that's the loving guidance for today I, i've listed out a lot of the different ways that they'll communicate with us but today's real loving guidance is to remain open-minded to the possibilities of our deceased loved ones coming and communicating with us in the ways that we're able to receive the communications and in the ways that they are now able to communicate with us and keeping that open mind so that we can actually keep their memory glowing obviously we love them they love us and so we're keeping that love and that connection on an energetic soul to soul level going um, even though they're not physically present with us anymore and and to keep the the open mind to those signs and symbols and messages because they might just be trying to communicate something to help you so when they're in the human form they're limited as to how they can help you but as an energy source on the in the next realm they're able to tap into all sorts of ways of helping you and guiding you and providing um, assistance for you in your life path as you continue on in this life. So be open to receiving those messages and, and um, don't just brush them off or try to rationalize them or, oh, that's just chance, coincidence, some freaky thing. Instead of just closing yourself to those possibilities, to remain open and receptive to them and, and what you can gain out of them. And you will discover that as you are more receptive um, to all those different possibilities, all those different ways that there are messages, that they're communicating with you, if you even start to take action towards some of them, you'll be amazed that, you know, by having, let's say, um, paid attention to the message within a dream that was being, like the lottery example that I gave, you know, the message within a dream, if you actually took some of that, that guidance and put it into action in real life, um, the doors and the possibilities and the other things that, that start to happen that are going to catch you even more off guard. You're like, oh my gosh, what the? And so, yeah, it is very interesting, this whole other realm that we are not fully engaged with, but we can as long as we stay open-minded and and uh, allow for ourselves to engage with uh, our deceased loved ones and this this next layer of what is um, pretty bewildering to us simply because we don't fully comprehend it. We we may see it, we may hear it, we may and and we are really we might it may catch us off guard and startle us a noise or seeing something that clearly is an indication of them, a reminder of them. And, and we don't know, our brain is like churning, trying to make sense of it. Like, how did this get here? Or what is this for real? What is going on here? Why? This is something that for sure this person would say or do or so forth. But um, just be a little more open-minded to it actually being them and their messaging to you and you and 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 give back to you know when when something happens that is pretty clear indication that it's them just say hey thank you for visiting thank you for still being with me and guiding me and thank you for still protecting me and looking after me i'm so grateful i love you i miss you thank you and just that gratitude 
that they are still around and that they're even making that effort from that other side to still be with a part of your life and be with you is is huge it works wonders it really does so that's mama's loving guidance to you today in the mystical unknown realm and um just be open to the messages my loves okay until next time mama marina signing off and telling you that she loves you always please sign uh go ahead and subscribe and thumbs up and leave those comments everything that you have to say regarding um, today's topic or any other topic i love to hear your feedback so i welcome it please please give us some some wonderful loving thoughts of your own all right until next time my loves